Hey, it's Jason here, and I know it's crazy times. I know that we all don't want to be doing what we're doing right now. Sitting inside, which I'm sure you're doing, I'm doing that here in San Francisco. All your work has probably evaporated, all your playing has evaporated, and all the teaching that I'm guessing you do has also evaporated, or so you think. Now, I've done a lot of teaching online. You may have done some you're probably going to want to do more because while gigs are certainly not happening uh, here in California, in the United States, or anywhere in the world really, uh, we can still be connecting with students. Several people have reached out to me, particularly the last week, and said, hey Jason, you should do something about online teaching because a lot of us have no idea what's going on or how to do it. I've used a lot of different services over the years and I found a great blog post which I'll link to here. Actually, my buddy Trevor passed it along to me and said, hey, maybe something like this and I read it and it is great. The thing that I'm thinking about and I just want to be sensitive to is we're now in a time where so many of us have lost all our work basically and musicians typically aren't crushing it financially. Some are. Many are just getting by. And so it's probably not the ideal time to go out and buy a whole ton of gear. You're probably trying to just keep the wolves at bay at this point. So I thought it would be helpful to come up with something that you could do right now that doesn't require any financial investment. And then once you get your teaching going online, some things that you can do that wouldn't break the bank that would allow you to teach online better. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of gear that I have here. I've got all kinds of microphones and all kinds of stuff over here and we're going to just break it down. I'm going to plug all this stuff into my laptop. I'm going to plug it into my iPad, my iPhone. We're going to try out a few different setups and you can hear the audio differences. But what I want to encourage you to do is just get started with what you've got. So whatever you're watching this on, maybe it's your phone, your tablet, your computer, you can teach on that. So we're going to start off by talking about how you can do that and then get into gear recommendations. So my number one recommendation for a service at this time is Zoom. And Zoom has really become popular in the last few years. My wife uses it for her work. I use it for various projects. And it is just a rock solid piece of software for online teaching. It's got a tablet version, it's got a phone version, Android, iOS, you name it. You can use it on your laptop, your desktop. It is free if you use it one-on-one -on -one with someone else. So a uh, lesson would be a great example of how you could use it when it's free. There are paid accounts that you can do a lot more on. They start at, I think, 15 bucks a month. So it's still not bad if you decide to do some group teaching. But just to get going, it's a really good option. It requires that you download the Zoom software uh, app on your phone or your tablet or whatever. Um, and then you can set up a meeting to talk to somebody. And you get that scheduled in the calendar. Zoom will do that for you. And you can set send your student an invite. So your student needs to create an account as well, and then you send them that link. It's easy to create a Zoom account, but I always find that if I have to create an account, another account, and have my student create another account, it's another barrier to entry. Again, it's easy to create an account, no big deal at all, um, but that's just one minor, minor, it's not even a criticism, because you gotta do it, I understand, but it's one thing that might be a little bit of a barrier, mild barrier. And then the other thing that sort of bums me out is kind of the default behavior, you invite somebody, and they they get emailed this link. Anytime I have to open up my email to find something like that, I get distracted by everything else and I just find myself for whatever reason kind of losing that Zoom info. Like I'm about to do a Zoom call and I think like, how, where, how do I connect with that person? How do I do this? Not a huge deal, but that's really it in terms of criticisms of Zoom. The major benefit for Zoom is the quality of the connection. I just think it's so strong and particularly well suited for music. There's a lot less in terms of like latency and weird artifacting and stuff like that. It all, of course, depends on what your internet connection's like and what your student's internet connection is like. So those have to be strong for any of these to work, but I find Zoom to be a little bit more tolerant than some other services. My second recommendation, number two after Zoom, would be Skype. Good old Skype, it's been around forever. It's owned by Microsoft now, and it's a great product. You know, Skype has a lot going for it. It's a little bit, I find it a little bit simpler to just call someone on Skype. It feels more like a regular 
phone call. I don't have to schedule the meeting. I just give them a call. I really get frustrated though teaching music lessons on Skype sometimes because it's notoriously bad for this sort of latency artifacting kind of thing. I'm not sure the technical term, but what will happen is you will all of a sudden hear something kind of slow down and then speed up to catch up. And that can be annoying even in regular conversation, but it's just absolutely terrible for a music lesson. You just can't even understand if the student made an error or if not. And this doesn't always happen. For years, Skype goes through phases of being, at least in my experience, really good and then kind of iffy and then getting back to good. I feel like it's kind of in a good phase or maybe I've just got better internet these days. I'm not sure. But that would be my second recommendation. It's totally free to use. One other thing about Zoom that I love, going back to Zoom, is that you can record the lessons on Zoom. The per if you can't do it on the phone, you can't do it on a tablet, but you can do it if you're using your laptop or using your desktop. And then you can upload it on listed to YouTube or give your students access to it however you like. You can't do that on Skype. There are ways to record with Skype, but they're a little bit hacky and they're not natively built in. Next up, if you're a Mac person, I'm a big fan of FaceTime. I like FaceTime. I also find that people who use Macs are comfortable with FaceTime and I'm trying to find something that works for sure, but also something that people have familiarity with because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to troubleshoot with your student at a lesson. I find that Skype is okay for that. Zoom is okay too. It asks you a bunch of questions at first. So you have to get used to that. FaceTime is just dead simple to get going. And so if you use a Mac and your student uses a Mac, I think it's a great option. I just taught a FaceTime lesson yesterday and I use it all the time. My fourth recommendation is Facebook Messenger. This could be great for a lot of people. It's not great probably if you're teaching young people. You probably don't want to be connecting to them via Facebook uh, in most circumstances. But if you're teaching an adult or you're teaching overseas or something like that, Facebook Messenger can be great. The Facebook pipes, whatever they've got going on in the background, I find to work particularly well uh, with Messenger. And whether it's on my phone or whether it's on my laptop, I do a lot of interviews on Facebook Messenger, on Skype, on FaceTime, all these platforms. I find Facebook Messenger to be rock solid. It can feel a little goofy to do something like a lesson through something like Facebook. And then if you aren't careful, you'll get interruptions from people if you're pretty active on Messenger. So there are some downsides, but if someone's familiar with it, if it's a good way for you to connect with them, that also works well. And you can use whatever you want in terms of headphones and microphones for all four of these options. So regardless of whether you use one of these four or something else, just get going. That's my recommendation. Just get it started. It's not gonna be the prettiest audio or video necessarily if you're just using your phone or your tablet or your laptop, but you can get okay results. So a couple quick tips on lighting. Let me just take you around the place here so you can see my setup. We got this bright window here and then fairly dark back here. So where I want to place myself is uh, like this would be pretty good right here. Zoom out a little bit. You can see me pretty well. You can see my instrument, which is over here. Grab it. Here's my base. So I would probably lower the camera just a little bit so that we could get the base in frame, but that's gonna be a pretty good option. A bad option would be something like this. If I flip around, so the light source is behind me. So now I am this strange shadowy figure and there's all this information behind the person. And so that's a bad setup for you or your student. A real simple thing to do is just flip it around and just make sure that that light source is behind your phone or your tablet or your camera or whatever you're using. And the next just general advice is try to get as close to the camera as you can, and by camera I mean phone, tablet, whatever, right? And get as close to that microphone as you can. This would be a bad spot over here, so you can see for pretty obvious reasons, and I'm getting far away from the mic and the detail's not that great. Of course, you get too close and you can't see both hands depending on what you're playing, so try to strike that balance, but try to get you and also try to get your student as close to that camera as possible. Okay, we're gonna get into some audio examples now so you can really hear how these various options compare and we're gonna start with the most bare bones of all, which, by the way, use that if that's what you got. This is probably not the best time to go out and buy a bunch of gear. Uh, so if you just got your phone, that's cool. Here's what my phone sounds like on my bass, and I'll play the same thing for all of these examples. <laughs> Thank you. 
And just for comparison, here's that same bit of music on my MacBook Pro, again, just using the built-in microphone. So that's what the laptop sounds like. That's what the iPhone sounds like. The iPad sounds similar as well. And is it the best audio quality? Not really. Is it good enough to get back on your feet and teach you some lessons? Certainly. So let's talk about how to upgrade from there. And I've got a whole bunch of different gizmos and gadgets to show you at all sorts of different price points. I'm gonna to link to everything in the description below so you can check it out. And I'll link to equivalents because I have a random assortment of gear. I'm a podcaster mostly. So some of mine is a little more podcasty than you might necessarily need. So first we're gonna check out this Apogee mic and the M, lowercase i, C. This is not the cheapest thing on the market. It's about $250, I wanna say. And again, I'll link below so you can check it out specifically. But it's a lightning mic, which I love. So it's got this nice long cord, and then the end here is a lightning connector. Now, one disadvantage is I've, I've found this to be not the world's greatest build, and you can actually, if you're not careful, I think you can kind of, I don't remember if I can get it, but this thing kind of like, doesn't always stay on this little piece here. So that's kind of a drag, but I've had it for I think five years and it always works. And what I'm going to do, because I don't want to just rest on the floor that's too far away from my instrument, I could use a little tripod, something like this that would elevate it a little bit, or I could clip it onto the stand or something like that. But I really like just using something like this. It's just a selfie stick. This is by Fugue Tech, I think you pronounce it. And it's real simple, it's real quick. You just let it go and you can get that mic wherever you need it for your instrument. So I'll take this off. This has got a little remote as well that you can use if you're taking photos. I think it's just technically a selfie stick, but I've actually used it for all kinds of recording things. And so that gets, it's not face level, but it's certainly good enough for a microphone for most situations. So I can attach the Apogee right there, just screw it on and I'm good to go. Okay, here's an example with my iPhone and the Apogee mic, and this is going to be a similar audio quality if you're doing it with an iPad. see I have the mic set a little high ideally for bass it would be a little bit lower but I like this kind of mic placement because I can also use this mic for my voice so the student can hear me and you can hear me back here too but I find that I can teach with this and I can just lean in a little bit lean out a little bit and it seems to work pretty well along with getting a good mic you gotta get some headphones on there are so many weird chunky artifacty things that happen when you don't wear headphones and you're teaching and it, it's just incredibly disturbing to both people on either side. So even if one of you wears headphones, it cleans it up a lot. Uh, and honestly, if you play the right instrument, just the good old air buds that have the microphone on them, you know, these things can actually work out okay. They sound surprisingly okay. They're not great for bass, but they're okay. Now the major disadvantage is, of, uh, I have this length of cord. So I am definitely not going to be able to play my bass and wear these. If I was singing, might be okay, or doing something kind of close, but it's generally not gonna work for most people. What works better, and I've done this in teaching and it works great, is to use some AirPods. So I just use my AirPods and I can have the microphone on my phone or my iPad still pick up my bass. So if I'm teaching on my iOS device, I can use these to hear and then I can still play the bass. Now, a disadvantage with these is the battery life, especially these, these are the first generation. My battery life is not good anymore. So I'm lucky to get through half a lesson with these. And if you're teaching a whole bunch of online lessons, which hopefully you will be, so you can get that money coming in, uh, these might not work out the best. There are all kinds of other options for headphones. You can certainly uh, 
pick a, a multitude of Bluetooth headphones for any type of device. I have my Bose, my, I usually use these for traveling. These are these noise canceling headphones. These are okay for teaching. They're definitely overkill. I think they're $350 or something like that. And if you do use them for teaching, I will always wanna make sure to turn the noise cancellation off. Otherwise, uh, I, I feel incredibly strange trying to teach with noise cancellation on. If you're using a device that has a headphone jack like your laptop or like an older iPhone or an iPad that still has one, I love the MX50s by Audio-Technica. These are musicians' favorite. Uh, they're, they're uh, allow these, I don't know what the technical term is, but you can rotate these ear cups. I don't know that technical term either, but so you can wear them like this. You can also pull one over to the side so you can just have one on. I think that's a great way for teaching. If you wanna take a break, you can put them right here. And it's just an incredibly useful, flexible, option for teaching and the sound quality is great. You don't have to worry about battery life or forgetting to charge them. And they come with three cords, uh, two of which I think are good for teaching. The one I use the most actually is this short one, which is the same problem as the iPhone uh, AirPods. Uh, it's just way too short. But then these other two, they have a very long, uh, cord without a coil like this, and you can use, if you're plugging into something, not necessary, but you can you can use that quarter inch. Uh, you're not gonna be doing that at your computer, but you might for a certain circumstance. And then I really like also the uh, coil cable. I find that this works really well for teaching and I can plug into my computer, or I'll show you in a bit another device that I use. These are kind of next level things, but getting some headphones, Bluetooth headphones are great. Doesn't have to be anything expensive. It can be cheap Bluetooth headphones. Of course, getting one with better battery life is gonna let you teach longer, but as long as you get some headphones on, those Audio Technicas or whatever, you're going to have a much better experience being able to hear the student, not having that bleed through coming and just having a better overall lesson experience. And of course, goes without saying, but everything I'm recommending here for you applies to your student. You might wanna give them the cheap recommendations to start off with, but there are definitely good options for headphones in the sub hundred dollar range, way under the hundred dollar range if you're talking about cheapo Bluetooth headphones and some microphones. There's some great USB microphones. We'll talk about that in a second on the computer and some less expensive eighth inch jack, this sort of thing and uh, other options like that. that you, so you can get going with a microphone and headphones for under a hundred dollars and have okay quality, certainly a higher level product than what you're getting just with the phone or just with the tablet or the laptop. Okay, let's talk about microphones that are going to work for your desktop or your laptop. These are wonderful mics that I use and there are a lot and a link up to some microphone resources so you can check out more. I am a huge fan of the ATR2100 by Audio-Technica. This is referred to as the podcaster's best friend. I find that it works well for music also and one of the great things about this is that it's got both XLR. So once you get into the more professional level of microphones, that's how you're going to connect them. But it also has USB, so you can connect it directly to your computer. You don't have to worry about any fuss. You can see I've got this <laughs> blue tape here that says, yes, USB. That's one of the downsides of this microphone. It tends to be a little bit unreliable with the USB after a couple of years. Mine went out. This one works great, but I have a second one of these, and after a couple of years it died. But hopefully, our coronavirus concerns have left us at that point and you still have a great XLR mic even if it does die, but it's not gonna die right away, we hope. And you can just use, I believe these are mini USBs that plug in and you just plug it in right here and then you can use whatever stand you need to get it close to your instrument. I have just a regular mic stand here. You can get shorter mic stands for sure. These aren't that expensive, but you just mount it and then we plug it into the computer. Make sure that you select it as the audio source and you're good to go. So let's get an example of what this sounds like on my laptop, still using the laptop camera, but with the ATR2100.
again, I'm keeping the mic a little bit in the middle. I'd probably have it a little bit lower for an ideal playing situation, but this is just a good balance so that I can talk and you can hear me play. Those microphones will get you started. I love that ATR2100. There are many other USB mics that are great for getting started. And now, if you wanna take your game to the next level, or if you wanna get into a little over $100, I really recommend Zoom products. The Zoom H2N, I believe is the current H2 that's out on the market. I think that's around $150, $160. Again, I'll link to that below, but that is a great mic for getting started, and that's a USB mic. And then if you upgrade to a Zoom H4, H5, H6, some of these others, you get some really cool features, and they start to turn into more audio interfaces than just microphones. So I have the Zoom H6, which I've had for about five years. I've recorded probably 600 interviews on this thing at this point. And what I love about this is it comes with all kinds of great components. Uh, so, uh, at least with the version that I got. So I have the Zoom itself and I also have a couple of mics. I have this XY and I have this Omni and I can plug that in, which I will do now. Uh, so I just put this in right here. Just click it in like that, turn it on. And now I can choose these LR right here microphones, turn them on. Now this is active right here. So this is gonna get a nice room sound and it works just really well. So I love Zoom products, particularly this H6, but you don't have to get the H6. And what I'm going to do just to show you, this is sort of like a more tricked out version. I'm also going to hook up a Shure SM58, which is just a good old rock and roll microphone. Nothing fancy here, but this is an SM58. I'm sure you've seen these somewhere in some performance. and they, you can throw them against a brick wall. Don't do that, but you can, and they'll, they'll still work great. And what I'm going to do, this is sort of the Cadillac setup for online teaching, is I'm going to set this up on this mic stand, and I'm going to get this close to my, my mouth so that I can talk to the student, and I'm going to plug this in using an XLR cable. So that's this connector that you've probably seen at some point in your life, this three-prong connector. That plugs into the bottom of the mic here. And then, if I can do it, <laughs> here, and then, there we go, and then you can plug this into the H6. So just like so, and now I wanna select the, I plugged it into microphone one, so I have that set up there. So now this is working, and this is working. And I'll get this all set up, and then I just turn this off and on right now here, and I could record remotely with this. So this is something you could actually leverage into doing some other audio work. I record concerts with this and everything. But I just use a USB, I believe Mini is the plug. It's that same one that we use with the ATR2100. And I'm going to plug that into my MacBook, and this is just going to be my audio. So you're going to hear this microphone on the bass, and you're going to hear this microphone with my voice, so you're kind of getting an idea of how you can level up in terms of audio. Now, this is not cheap. I think it's around $400 to $500. This is about $100, so you're, we're getting into, let's say, maybe you've been teaching online lessons for a couple months now. Hopefully, coronavirus has left us uh, largely, or the, the pandemic is, is, is fading, um, but maybe you realize this is a good thing to be doing, and you're going to be doing more of this. This is a great device to upgrade to. So I really like this microphone for the bass. I think it picks up a great frequency. And then we've got this mic right here, so it's obviously much easier than bending over. So you're getting the voice, you're getting this right here. This is a wonderful setup. And let me just show you how that looks a little more clearly. So this is definitely kind of a next level setup, but if you're into this and you get into this and you realize this is something you're gonna be doing a lot of, I think that this is a really good way to go. So here is the Zoom. And not to be confused with the software, <laughs> Zoom, I know that's confusing. It's a separate company, uh, and that is connected to my computer right here, and then what we can do is we can, I know this is very meta seeing this, but you can click and you just select, so the microphone is going to be the H6, and then I'm just using the face down HD camera. You can certainly get another video camera, webcam of sorts, um, but I find that getting really good audio is the most important thing, and so that final touch, I've got right here, US, not US, 
USB, sorry, XLR plugged in, and this is my Shure SM58, so you get the voice, you get everything, and it seems to work really well. I hope this was helpful. It's such a scary time that we're all living in right now. It goes without saying you don't need to hear that from me. I'm just trying to figure out, like everybody, how to be helpful and how to do what I can. I hope that you found this helpful. Any additional thoughts? Again, I'm a podcaster. I'm a bass guy. I kind of have what I like and what I've done. I know one percent, one tenth of one percent, probably of all things audio. So this is an area that I spend a lot of time in, but I'm definitely not the uh, final say in all this. So please leave some comments below if you have anything else to add. I really appreciate you watching this, and I know we'll all see each other on the other side.